But, uh, well, uh, first I want to thank everyone for coming and thank uh, Shader Library, North Hills Library, for all, and Sharon and Marie Jackson, all the progressive programs. They're People's University to bring like um, three quality artists like this. And as Terry said, it doesn't get any better than this in, in Pittsburgh in terms of uh, having three sculptors of this caliber uh, together. Now, um, I told that I was going to say nice things and had something planned. Just let everybody talk. So uh, if anybody has questions or wants to say anything at any time, feel free to, to ask questions. But um, <clears throat> we have, um, well, this is James, Susan, and Dan. So, um, and they brought some samples of work that are on the back table. So what we're going to do is just have everybody um, just informally, you know, talk. I'll ask some questions if anyone has a question. Then we're going to show each artist's work again on the screen, and they'll kind of look at it, and if they feel like commenting or you have questions about specific pieces, where it is, or, you know, how was it doing that piece, you know, you can ask it at that point. But um, we'll kind of just, like, ask everybody like, individually in terms of being, you know, in Pittsburgh. And Thad, you've been here and working for... A long time. Can we, can we get a number on that? Or 50? I, I came, yeah, uh, came to Pittsburgh when I was a young man, 1946. 46. So I've been here ever since. And you went to Pitt? I went to University of Pittsburgh. You're on a track team? I ran track one year and <laughs> got married and I had the track. And um, I started uh, doing sculpture. Uh, if I'm not speaking loud enough, raise your Everybody hand. Everybody here back the there? Back. Yeah. <laughs> I started uh, sculpture. I, I'm a self-taught sculptor. And uh, many people are surprised at that. But I always say that <coughs> no matter what you learn or where you learn it, eventually you're self-taught. Because sooner or later, the teacher goes home. And you are on your own. So, and then if you start seeing things that you didn't see in school, or if you don't really believe what they taught you, you start branching out on your own and learning how to do these things. My influence in our African tribal art and Brancusi, Constantine Brancusi and a Japanese-American named Simulu Noguchi. Now my girlfriend's Japanese, she's somewhere, so she Where's always Terry? reminds Terry me, I, I always <laughs> pronounce the Japanese names wrong, but I also pronounce the American names wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make a tremendous difference. But my work uh, is based on the idea of weight and space, in the sense that it should have a floating quality, it should have a feeling of levitation, and also it should be rhythmic. That comes from, uh, if you look at tribal arts, and of course I'm also a great jazz fan. So, uh, and, and that's pretty much in, in a nutshell. And I started carving in the early 50s. So it's a simple <laughs> math. So I'm still at it. I was in the studio today. And uh, fortunately, I've always been uh, pretty healthy. So uh, I can uh, I work, I work large. I don't work as long as I used to, but I can still work so sort of, sort of large, but uh, that's the nutshell of what I do. But I, I, I mean, such an uh, approachable, gracious man. I think in 1997 you had your Carnegie Museum show. Yeah, it was my second show. Yeah, the second show I there. Had my first one in '68. But so every 30 years. It gets <laughs> <laughs> so 30 years from now. But I, I happened to see you standing outside your show one day, and he graciously like didn't know me, but took me through and 
explained his work, and that's kind of what we're trying to do tonight. Although these people are really uh, wonderful what they do, but they're accessible, and it's just kind of to celebrate that they're here and that you can talk to them, and maybe they'll invite you to come and see their work. Maybe you can collect their work. I mean, because I, we were talking earlier, like 100 years from now, their work is going to be is part of this city's history, and it's what's going to be known, you know, just by virtue of their public uh, pieces. And that you did uh, on Samsonian Way um, with the, the Lul Soyinka collaboration yeah. Yeah. Uh, house. Could you talk a little bit? Were you aware of what the text was going to be and what your piece would be with that? Uh, probably not. I was silent. But no, I didn't know um, the City of Asylum is a project started by Henry Reese. And uh, people remember uh, Rushdie, all the problems he caused. Salmon Rushdie. Yeah, and, uh, and of course he came here. But they had. Uh, they have a, a man from Nigeria. Salvador, they have a man not from Venezuela, they have a young woman Burma. from Burma. And what they do, they house, they have a man from China. These um, political uh, 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 writers that leave their country, uh, there's five cities, but I think Pittsburgh has been <coughs> like the most prominent in this project. It's right near the mattress factory. And one of the things that I did was a, a, a spiritual house with rings and whatnot, having an idea, not so much from a religious denominational idea, but from the idea of personal liberty, personal spirit of escaping whatever situation you know, you're in. So always sort of resort to some sort of wings. Uh, I don't know, and mine is mostly music and art, but uh, so and that was the theme. And Wallace Sayanke is a, the first Nobel uh, writer from Nigeria, and he came and he wrote his ideas. And he's he's uh, been a, a political refugee off and on. Depends on who the dictator is in Nigeria. Then he has to leave, but uh, but he, uh, he was the uh, uh, the uh, main person I collaborated with on the idea. So that's that's on Samsonia Way in the north side by the Mattress Factory Museum, and if we can segue into Susan, who Susan uh, has done uh, 